believe are some of the benefits for find, you know for aspiring coaches finding a mentor early on in their career when they're in that sort of developmental stage? Yeah, I think it's um, it's a bit of a funny subject, mentoring, because people I don't think really understand what it is. Um, and you have people who say, oh, you know, I need to get a mentor, but you know, what do they want to get the mentor for? Um, and it may be you know very generic in terms of strength and conditioning, or maybe something quite specific. Uh, maybe something around speed or around power training, velocity-based training or something like that. So I think I think the, the key for, for anyone who, who wants to find a mentor is to, to really seek out someone that they think is going to improve the areas that you know, they want to improve at as a professional. And I think you know, that goes back another step to where you, you really have to do some research on, on yourself to start with to, to be able to identify you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are and where you're going to get the most benefit from about uh, certificates and and courses like we mentioned the ASCA courses um, and, and even conferences what, what, um, for sort of more your, your education as well as networking. What would be some of your favourite ones that you've experienced um, for SNCs? Uh, look, I'm, I'm extremely biased. I think you know the ACA uh, does a tremendous job around the, the course education uh, they have now. And, you know, we've just been able to um, uh, rebuild. Build the, the level one, two, and, and three courses. Um, there's some really good, good up to date information there. Um, is it everything you ever wanted it to be? Probably not, but it's a, it's a really good start there. Uh, um, and then moving on from there, the, the ACA conference um, that, that's held every year, um, November this year, um, second to the fourth on, on the Gold Coast. So, you know, love to have as many people as we can come to that conference. Again, a lot of really good learning to be had in the in the lectures and the, and the practical sessions but a lot of good stuff happens outside in the um you know the show room and that sort of thing where you, you bump into people and you get to talking and build relationships build your network what would be your advice for someone that's perhaps finds that um overwhelming or or they find themselves um focusing on one thing and then before you know it two weeks later they're focusing on another thing but would be, i'm sure you've seen those uh, situations before uh, and we've all sort of probably experienced it when we're developing uh, what would be your focus is it one a month and get really nailed down on that area before moving on to another or is it even longer like get you know, is, is it six months and then move on to another phase of your coaching what sort of advice there uh, um, look you know, how, how long's a piece of string there jack it's um it's a it's a big question i think you know fundamentally you know getting the basics right is the key for for anyone that your mentor, um, they come along to you and, you know, well, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a strength and conditioning coach? So, you know, how do you coach? Um, what's your philosophy around coaching? You know, how do you get athletes and coaches to, to buy in to what you're doing? So I think, you know, the fundamentals is the, is the key one to start with. And as they can improve their, their coaching skill, their soft skills as a coach, then how do we build in? Well, how, do, how does that look when you're, you're coaching a um, a female athlete as opposed to a male athlete, a, a junior athlete to a senior athlete, um, um, the same athlete when they're doing um, energy systems training or repeat speed or something like that compared to doing power clean in the gym. So I think it's understanding the, the diversity of, of the role. Um, what would be your advice for, for coaches, like you said, to be able to bring that energy, make sure you engage your athletes like before the briefing or be before you start uh, coaching for the day, what's some of your favourite strategies to make sure you're in the right frame of mind and you're really clear on your message with your athletes? Look, I think it's you know, understanding what your session is. It's, it's not a you know, fly by the seat of your pants and come in and go, oh, yeah, we're doing this session today. It's all you know, you are well planned. I think you know, meeting with your athletes prior to the session, that's not a formal thing. Um, you know, just walking around and asking them how they are. You know, how was your weekend? You know, getting to know a bit about your athletes, so you can get a feel for what the room's going to be like once you start the session. Um, you know, particularly if they've come off a couple of hard days of training or off a poor result on the weekend, you know they may be down a little bit. So then you're thinking, well, this is the session I've got planned. I really need to be on my game here. I really need to be up tempo and ready to go. If they're, they're really up tempo and, and they're feeling it, well, maybe you might have to just hold them back a little. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to share just before we uh, wrap up the show, John, in terms of education uh, and you know finding a mentor in strength and conditioning? Look, I don't think that you know 
the best advice I can do is really reflect on your own coaching at the moment and what your philosophy is, um, just your, your general coaching philosophy. What energy do you bring to each session? And then what your philosophy around each of the key strength and conditioning elements are, you know, how do you coach speed? How do you coach strength? How do you coach power? How do you coach energy systems? Because if you understand how you do it, then you can find out where there's some potential deficits so that when you do go along to find a mentor, you know exactly what to do. And that way you save time for yourself because you're already researching, you know what you're looking for. And it saves time for your mentor rather than having to go through a series of questions about, oh, what, what have you done? Where have you been? What's happening? And you can go along and say straight away, this is what I'm looking for. 